Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. Welcome to post Thanksgiving traffic in the northeast of this country. We're on I 95 headed from DC to Richmond and stuck in traffic. So I was like, hey, while the car is driving itself, which it is, and I've got a hand on the wheel so people don't complain, I thought I would actually talk about something that a viewer, Tomas from Norway, wrote me this morning. He asked me about, um, well, actually, he was commenting on the, um, the winter driving video, which he said was good, which I'm, I'm glad, especially in Norway. So anyway, I'll put a card up for it, whichever side it's on, I can't remember. I think it's this side when I do it. Anyway, I'll put a card up for that um, so you can look at it. But anyway, it, th there's some really good tips in there. Oh, the car's changing lanes, okay. Hold on one second, let me make sure it does a good job. All right, good job. It did a good job. Uh, it's, it's actually really cool because it's, it's changing lanes to try to get into faster lanes in the middle of a traffic jam, which I think is pretty awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Kona, by the way, is in the background. She's like right there, as you can see her. Anyway, so he wrote me and he said, wow, it'd be really cool if the AI in the computer was better. He didn't really put it this way, but I think something like an assistant or a secretary. So a little bit more like a human being might be uh, as, as an assistant. And so that got me thinking and I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea that you could have the computer. And I, I was thinking the way that that Tesla is such an agile company. And again, I'll try to remember to put a card up here for that as well. But that they, they don't really have defined jobs that you have to do all the time and you can switch things around. And so if there was a team of AI type engineers who wanted to take this on, like five or six people, that they could actually work on something like this as a little side project, but it would be to make the car a little smarter, not as a car, but more of as, as an assistant. So I'll give you a, a, a negative example right now. Good, and the traffic clears up as soon as I start filming, so that's nice. Anyway, uh, a counter example would be that every morning when I get in the car, it always suggests, it, it starts navigating to work. And I pretty much never go to work first thing. I either go to the gym or drop off my son um, first thing. So it's it's not smart enough to have figured out that it should probably like essentially figure out what my schedule is and make that happen. Now, as a counter example to that, my Apple iPhone is really good about that. It actually is mostly accurate in terms of suggesting like where I might want to go. So I'll get up and it'll say, hey, are you going to Athens Academy, which is where my son goes to school? And you say yes, and it can navigate you there. But it's obviously not super convenient because it's not on my car. So I would much rather have my car do that. And clearly if Apple's able to do this, it, it seems like a relatively straightforward thing to kind of memorize your schedule over a couple of weeks. And then once it figures it out, the places that you're most likely to go are just sitting in the car for navigation when it starts. I think this thing's it's gotten a little bit sideways. Sorry, it's bumpy. Um, but anyway, I think that, that that's an example of something that the car could do a much better job of. It's, it's pretty much poor. And ironically, the funny thing is to me that the only times it doesn't suggest going to work is exactly when I would like to go to work. So I get in the car to go to work and it doesn't suggest that and then I have to put it, you know, I just, it's like a couple of pushes of the buttons, but whatever. So, so that's one thing that would be really useful. Another would be if it could help with situations like sometimes I'll forget to plug the car in at night and then I have to go through the process of opening up the app and it takes, a, or just walk out of the garage I guess, but in any case it takes it takes a few minutes to figure this all out and it takes some effort, uh, but it would be nice if you could have, I don't know why it's trying to get in the fast lane, we're not even in, anyway. Um, it would be nice if the, if the car could communicate with your phone app and it could go like, hey, you forgot to plug the car in, you might want to do that tonight before you go to bed, so that it was just an active reminder of what you needed to do rather than having you have to remember and say like, did I plug it in, did I not plug it in, I have to like check my Tesla app, and you know it takes a, a, like 30 seconds for it to kind of reconnect with the car because the car goes to sleep when you don't use it for a while. So it's, it's that kind of small pain in the butt that really is not all that necessary but that it would be very cool. If, oh my gosh, I think it's trying to get in the HOV lane. Sorry, it's very aggressively trying to get over. Don't try to get in the HOV lane, all right. <laughs> it's it's like I've got HOV settings on, but I'm not allowed to drive on the HOV here. And so I really, I wish, there's another AI thing or, or just something where you could say like, even if it was just an honestly a list, because there's HOV lanes, or sorry, not HOV, but express lanes in the, in the country 
And so I believe this one in DC is the Easy Pass. And it would be nice if there was a list that you could specify which ones you were allowed to drive on because I'm not allowed to drive on that. I need like this plastic box. So I don't even know that that's AI. That's just a database issue. But that would be a lovely thing. So, um, so you know, certainly having the car be smarter in terms of AI, but also just in terms of not trying to do stupid things like that where it's trying to get into a highway that it's not allowed to get into and I can't specify that without turning it off for everything which when I'm at home I obviously do want to drive on the Peach Pass lanes because I get to do that for free with uh, with this car so anyway there's another feature suggestion for you uh, I also had a, a future suggestion for, um, I guess it'll be a future suggestion video <clears throat> rather than specifically AI, but I had a suggestion for Andre and team, and this is not an immediate thing, but I've noticed with full self-driving beta, it's really good, but there's no, I, I was calling it precious cargo mode, which is essentially if you're carrying, like I was bringing home coffee the other day, like four of them in a little tray, and I couldn't use the autopilot because it's too aggressive even in chill mode. And there's a lot of speed bumps and things like that in, in uh, Springfield, Virginia. So um, I, I think it would be really cool to have like a like a you know precious cargo, fragile things, whatever you want to call it, but that it would go extra extra carefully around corners. It would decelerate and accelerate very very slowly, and especially speed bumps, it would like take them at maybe five miles an hour, would slow way down. So maybe it should be called annoy the person behind you mode. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be everything like super gentle. Uh, but it's not a mode that you would use a ton of the time, but when you do need it, there's kind of no way to drive an autopilot when you need to have it drive super carefully. Like if you had fragile things or rollable items in the back or whatever it was. So I think that that would be super helpful as well. So anyway, there's another thing. Uh, in terms of other AI stuff, I, I think it brings up calendars when you get in the car and that's actually convenient. But it, I don't, to my mind, and, and maybe it's just because most of my meetings either don't have a space or there's Zoom meetings, but it would be really cool if you had a location in your calendar and let's say it was like a meeting at 11 o'clock at Starbucks or something at a certain location and you get in your car at 1030 that the car would say, hey, I'm assuming that you want to go to Starbucks right now and, and get there by 11. So it wouldn't just bring up the calendar, but it would also put the, into the navigation what the address was automatically. Again, I it may do that right now. I don't know about that. I have not experienced that for sure. And I would think that I have at least some of my meetings have had uh, physical addresses in them. But in this day and age, most of my meetings tend to be on Zoom or else I know where they are, so I don't put in the address. But Maybe I'll try that out. Anyway, you can definitely let me know in the comments if there are, if it does do that already, and I just don't know it. But anyway, and speaking of which, actually, give me suggestions because, like, I, I think this would be cool if we could create a feature list suggestion box for Tesla or of things that are not, you know, they're not at the top of the pile. They're not super urgent, but they're just convenience things that would make life easier for us users. And I'm sure that uh, crowdsourcing this would be better than me just kind of thinking about it off the cuff, but certainly things like having it remind you to plug it in, having it be smarter about where you're expecting to go based on your schedule or based on your calendar events, things like that. Having it um, be perhaps smarter about, again, like if it's cold or warm outside, that it could maybe turn on the climate control of the car as it notices that you're getting up in the morning, because certainly it could do that with the phone and assume again you'd have to give it access to the data but that if it knew that the phone was moving around so that you were awake in the morning that it could go like oh it's likely that in a half an hour or so this person is going to want to leave i'm plugged into the wall so rather than use battery to air condition the car or heat it up or something i will just go ahead and turn it on for them that would be really really useful uh, there are other, oh the other thing I was thinking about was um, and, and actually I think this information right su suggested this one was if you're let's say you go shopping at the mall and you're gone for several hours and it's again super cold or super hot out or, or whatever it is that if it had a, G a GPS lock on your car that as you came out of the mall and got closer to the car you know maybe a hundred or two hundred meters that it would turn the car on and that it would it, turn on the climate for you automatically. Because a lot of times you come out, like you've been shopping, grocery shopping or, or whatever, and you've got your hands full and you can't really 
open up the phone app and like tell it that you want to like then turn on the climate control and all of these things that would be it's, it's annoying it's a little bit difficult and cumbersome so if the if the if you at least could give it the option to turn on automatically that would be really cool uh there was one other thing too was i was trying to voice activation. oh voice activation i knew that was the other thing so yes this was also her suggestion i think this is a really good suggestion is that the uh if if you're outside of the car and you don't bring your phone with you or or the like that you could perhaps it we could do something like a voice imprint so again I, i'm sure that alexa does this i also am sure that siri does this because i know i've trained it before but that you could say hey tesla unlock the door for me and that maybe what you could do is add an extra security layer to that of having a pin where you'd be like one two three four is your oh my gosh i can't believe my pin <laughs> <laughs> That's like space balls. No, but you know, but it would be like, so you would do it, it would recognize your voice, but as an extra layer of security, you would say like, what is your pin? Uh, and because of a lot of times, especially at home or something like that, the car is locked and you just want to run out and grab something out of the, the back seat that you forgot and you don't bring your phone with you and you're like, ah, so, you know, I, I would not suggest that the car would let you drive without having your phone or some sort of key involved. Looks like we're about to slow down here in a minute our distance a little. In fact, I'm actually going to slow down manually just to make life a little bit less stressful. Uh, but anyway, I think that would be a great thing to be able to at least unlock the door or, or do something like that. And once you're inside, of course, you can open the front and all the other stuff if you want to. By the way, um, you didn't know this, but you can actually do most things from the voice commands in the car, including like locking the doors, unlocking the doors, opening the front, opening the back. Assuming, of course, you're not driving. If I tried to do it right now, it certainly would not open the front, I hope. But you push the button and say, unlock the doors or something. And I only know that now <laughs> because I told him I wish it would do that. Yeah. And he said, it does do that. We were so. talking about that before I recorded this. And I said, any kind of feature request you want? And she was like, oh, I'd love to be able to, while I'm driving, without having to put it in park, tell it to unlock the doors. Because when you're picking kids up from school, a lot of times the, the people are trying to keep the line moving. And you're, you know, they're, they're like, go, 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 don't stop. So you don't want to stop, put it in park, have the doors unlock that. So it would be convenient at that point just to be able to do that. And she suggested that. And I was like, wait, it already does that. So there are a lot of things you can do by pushing the button. But I'm talking about outside the car. If you could walk up to it and say, please unlock the door. And it would recognize your voice. It would take a voice imprint. Um, and then from that, it might then ask you for a pin as a security measure just to make sure that somebody with a similar voice did not come up and try to open the door. So anyway, a bunch of feature requests. Uh, and like I said, I started with this thinking about it as an AI thing, but I think it's actually a feature request type of episode. And perhaps what we could do is just put together like a Google sheet or something, just a little spreadsheet that we could like have posted for anybody at Tesla if they wanted to see features that we're interested in. I would love to see waypoints still. We're on the beta software and we haven't gotten waypoints yet. So <laughs> one of these days we'll get waypoints, but I know that the people with the regular software actually have waypoints now. So I'm sure it will come eventually. All right. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, don't forget that, um, during this holiday season, don't forget about our merch store. We have lovely gifts for the Tesla nerd in your family or for yourself if you want a self-gift. That's always good. That's the best gift because you know you want it. And also, uh, don't forget that we have, I've, I've got some announcements coming up. We're, we're driving home right now, obviously. And when we get home and the next video I do, I'm going to talk about some Patreon announcements. So it's, you know, not earth shattering, but it's relatively big news. So that's cool. <laughs> Poor dog does not like it when we stop. Uh, anyway, so in, and in the meantime, of course, please do like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe to help out the channel. It helps out a ton. So I will talk to you all later. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.